Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we will continue our work on the PA brick of the Drake TR7 and I think we can finalize our work today with this brick to focus on the next topics. So let's start. The new resistors are in place here and here. By the way, it's necessary to look for a good ground connection here because on the rear side this resistor here and here has no ground connection so we only can rely on the via but I'm not sure whether this via is existing or it is good enough so we sold it here and here also and look also for good contact here on the top side where the resistors are connected and connected to the base I checked the other resistors and by the way before the resistors were in I checked the feedback capacitors so okay 50 nanofarad so I have 40 something and 100 nanofarad. We soldered some connections uh, where I thought it could be necessary. Removed the old thermal compound. It is clean now. Did the same on the heatsink. The heatsink here is also clean now and can now I can install it with uh, some new heat compound. The whole brick is ready now. All transistors are installed with thermal compound, power transistors. We have here the new damping resistors, 150 ohms, two times in parallel. This damping resistor here I checked also, it has 15 ohms, not 150, it has 15 ohms. I checked it, it has 15 ohms, that's still okay. It's a damping uh, resistor for the driver, for these two transistors, for the driver transistors. Well, now it should be okay. I will do another check whether it is stable now or not, whether we still have a problem. But before I bring it back into the unit, into the transceiver, I will do another check. Another check is the measurement of the frequency response of the low pass filter, which is here. The PA brick is out. That makes it easy. That's the output of the PA, which is connected to the antenna relay. Then the signal goes through the low pass filter and goes to the antenna. I have here my simple sweeper. The output of the local oscillator is connected here with these two clips. It is simulating the PA output and here on the antenna I've connected the detector. To activate the relay in transmit mode I need a PTT. Power is set to zero mode SSB and then I can start with my sweeper and to measure the frequency response for all bands I start with 1.5 megahertz but I will focus a little bit more on the screen and now let's start with the first measurement 1.5 megahertz or 160 meter band single shot that's the result that's the 1.5 megahertz band, what is this? 1.5 megahertz band. The limit is minus 100 dB. Attenuation has a little bit more than 0 dB. I think there's no uh, amplification in the passive network. I think it's only a problem of the impedances. Maybe the load impedance is not exactly 50 ohms for the generator of my sweeper. So we have a little bit more output than estimated. This may be caused by the filter, but we see here no problems beginning with 3 megahertz we have a, a very steep response as it should be perfect result this is the result for the 80 meter band 3.5 megahertz band is marked here also perfect slope no problems here we have the result for 7 megahertz band also perfect slope what this is I don't know Maybe if there's an unwanted resonance, but it's minus 70 dB, so we can forget it. Maybe it's a, an external uh, stray coupling or so from an external signal would be in the range of 18 megahertz. Hmm. Don't know any 18 megahertz station here. Anyhow, perfect also for the 40 meter band. 14 megahertz or 20 meter band we have here a notch. I think this is part of the design of the low pass filter or an unwanted resonance, but 
Again, no problems which could cause an oscillation. We don't have an oscillation on 14 megahertz, so I think this is normal. And now let's go to the 15 meter band, 21 megahertz, where we have the problem. This is the result for 21 megahertz. We see here no, absolutely no problem. This small notch here <coughs> is not relevant, only 1 or 2 dB. Maybe it's an artifact by some uh, stray coupling or so. But perfect uh, attenuation, perfect curve. So we cannot say that this curve would be cause any oscillation. So the low pass filter is not a problem in the 21 megahertz band. And the last one is the 10 meter band, 28 megahertz. You also see a perfect slope. Here is again a notch. Maybe it is caused by the design or not. I'm not sure. We have a good uh, 50 ohm attenuation in the output. In the input, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, so uh, maybe th these effects are caused by the input, which is not perfectly matched. We also have here some small gain. Again, I think it's a question of the uh, impedance matching. Okay, in general, we can say the low pass filter is okay for all bands and the low pass is not generating or cannot generate any problem we have. The reason is whatever it is. And now first test with the PA brick in place again. It is soldered in, connected to the power, 13.8 volt input. What is this here? Shouldn't be there. The output, however, is not connected to the low pass filter in the first step. It is connected via this cable directly to the dummy load into the watt meter. So I can read the power only here, not on the watt meter in the TR7. And I will check whether we have output on all bands and whether this PA brick works. I will also make a uh, uh, connection of the spectrum analyzer to see how the spectrum is. But the main topic is whether we have now full output power without any problems, any self oscillation. So let's start. 28 megahertz, 10 meter. Watch this. Uh, full scale is 200 watts, so 100 watt is here. With CW. I have 10 amps in the DC supply. 100 watts, okay. It's, a, it's exactly 20 amps. That's okay. Now let's go to 15 meter or 20 megahertz where we had a problem. And now we have full output power, also 90, 100 watt. There is still a little bit a problem. On 21 megahertz, we have less, less output. Maybe it's a question of alignment. I have to look for the alignment of the whole uh, transceiver. I will do a complete realignment. Maybe there is a problem, but we have stability now. That's important. You see, we have here nearly 100 watt. The ALC cannot work because the ALC is connected to the SW upbridge and the SW upbridge here in the, in the rear side is not connected because we don't use this antenna connector, we use a direct output here. So I have to be a little bit careful, but in general we have full output without any oscillations. I will use the spectrum analyzer, but let's go to 14 megahertz. Okay. 7 megahertz. Okay, 3.5 millimeter. Okay, and 1.5 on the 60 meter. Oh, oh. Okay, also. Yeah, it seems I have to align the ALC and on the low band. One, ah, 1.7. I have to increase the frequency a little bit to go into the band. And ah, now it's easier, okay. Well, I'm a buffer. 1.5 megahertz is a problem because I think the high pass filter cuts the lower frequencies. Well, that's obviously okay. And now I will check the output spectrum. The top line is 0 dBm. My 
dummy load has an attenuation of 60 dB, so the top line is 60 dBm, that would be 1 kilowatt. 10 dB down is 100 watt, so this line here is 100 watt. And I'm on, on uh, 50 meter, 21 megahertz. We have here 10 megahertz per division, so that's a zero response. We have here 50 megahertz in the center. We can read now a frequency a little bit above 20 megahertz. This is 1 watt output, 10 watt output, and this is 100 watt output. And you see the odd and the even harmonics are coming up. Okay, but we do not have any oscillations uh, in the vicinity of the carrier. We had a 10 MHz plus minus, you remember, these oscillations are gone. So we can assume that the output is now okay. Why it is not, uh, not fully 100 Watt, only 90 Watt, I don't know in the moment. Maybe, as I said, a realignment will help. I will check the other bands also, but I'm quite sure that we can now connect the low-pass filter and see whether we have there any problem. Now let's do a final check or test with the low-pass filter installed. The output of the PA is connected now to the relay and to the low-pass filter. The power meter is connected to the output and on the other side to the dummy load. And I can measure here on 7 MHz. Full output 100 watts, 14 megahertz, full output also 100 watt, and on 21 megahertz, 70 watt only, 28, 80, 90 watt, okay. That's a known problem of the uh, transceiver that in the 10 meter band that the output is is limited. Maybe I have to realign here the trimmer on the pre-driver board. There's a trim pot which is sometimes not working best but that's not the problem. The problem is uh, 21 megahertz only 70 watt not more. What is the reason? I scratched my head thought about what I have done and then I, I realized the problem. What I have overseen when I measured the low pass filter characteristics with my sweeper. On 21 megahertz, I said it's okay. No, it's not okay. We have here at the 21 megahertz an attenuation of 2.5 dB or 3 dB. We have here a resonant point at 28, 29 megahertz. That's wrong. We are on 21 megahertz. This slope here should start earlier should be flat and then go down. I calculated it, simulated it with a, a program for such filters. I can show you in one moment. All other filters we have measured are flat. They are e ideal. And then there's a, a point where it, where it goes down, whether here or here, but they have a, a flat characteristic. I think it's a, a Chebyshev characteristic. Chebyshev filter is, has a flat top and then a rather steep um, slope here which is uh, attenuating the harmonics very well. This is not a flat topic top. This is uh, there is something wrong because this frequency here is wrong. It should be here and I show you the true curve when I calculate it with an appropriate program. For the calculation I have taken these values, there are two coils dot six three micro Henry or six hundred thirty nano Henry. Two capacitors have one hundred twenty-five <coughs> picofarad, one has one hundred ninety-five. That is the low pass filter for the uh, fifteen meter of a twenty-one megahertz. And this should have a cutoff frequency of twenty-four megahertz according to the data in the service manual of the TR7. When we recalculate it, simulate it, we get following. I'm using here the program LZ, it's from the ARL handbook 2000, 
12 or so. I don't remember. It's a rather old program, but it's very good for such filters. The schematic is exactly the same as we have here in the, the manual. Input output impedances are 50 ohms. And now let's go to the plot. The plot is this nearly perfect flat top and with a frequency of 24 megahertz this is 24 megahertz here about we have a 3 dB attenuation or so but for 21 megahertz we have no output dip no loss no 2.5 or 3 dB 3 dB we have measured is a power loss of 50% nearly 50% 2.5 dB we have here 0 dB loss is a perfect plot for for the filter as it should be and this would be in line with all other filters for other bands which also have this characteristic which we have measured but here we don't have what can be the reason well what i'm doing here the low pass filter is out and i measure from this point 21 megahertz the this wafer switch is in any position, I think it's a 7 MHz position, so no connection, so this is isolated and the output is connected to the antenna because this wafer switch is in the uh, 21 MHz position, so the signal goes through here, back to the output to the antenna. This is connected here, input at the wafer switch, and the output here is connected to the sweeper and the result I'm surprised this is a resonance curve for 21 megahertz it is perfect this is uh, 21 megahertz we have here 30 megahertz at 20 24 megahertz which is here the attenuation starts a little bit I have here some DB uh, gain here, I think it's a problem of the not perfect um, impedance matching and I'm in the receive mode, not transmit, mo transmit mode the uh, transceiver switched off so maybe the reason is this is that I have a some dB more but I have absolutely no, no resonance curve I will check the other ones and uh, replace the input to the contact of the wafer switch take out the relay and see what happens. The next step is I took out this antenna relay here and I connected the sweeper input to the wiper to the root of this wafer switch. With the input here so I can switch all, all filters and the output again is connected here to the antenna so I can measure from here over this total over all uh, low pass filters to the output and I can switch them the, the rod is in so I can select every band let's start we start with 1.5 MHz low pass filter this is 10 MHz, 5 MHz same setting as for 2.5 MHz then we go to 3.5 MHz 80 meter band there's another step, this is 5 megahertz. Then we have 7 megahertz, 14 megahertz. Again, this dip, I do not know what it is. Maybe there is a, a component inside which generates a resonance, which shouldn't be there. It's looked like a, it's a very sharp resonance. Could be a cable or so. We will see. This is 21, as it should be, and 28, as it should be, 40 megahertz, the cutoff frequency. It is okay. So I go to the next step, but what to do? The sweep output is connected again to the cable, coax cable on side of the PA output. The center lead is disconnected from the PA, so this pin is free, the cable. 
goes to the low pass filter the transmit relay is set to transmit via this screwdriver I do not energize it because I, I fear to produce a short circuit on this board so I do it mechanically and we see again the, the curve here, the resonance point what we don't want to have the relay is not the problem as we have seen but again we have this peak at nearly 30 megahertz and now I will uh, do another test I will connect the sweeper the sweeper output not here I will connect it directly in transmit position here on this board where the sorry where, where the cable comes on is connected this cable from the PA is connected here and I will uh, unsolder it and connect the sweeper directly here I leave the rest of the position as it is and see whether we still have this hump the sweeper is connected now on the other end of the cable the cable is disconnected the cable from the PA I go directly over the relay in transmit position and then the signal is flat as it should be you see we have here 21 megahertz and then it goes down 28 megahertz okay but we have to we do not have this peak this resonance peak it is flat as it should be so it's obvious that the cable maybe the cable length is a problem that it is resonant quarter of a wavelength hmm. 15 meter a quarter is 4 meter times 0 06 it is 3 meter 2.7 2.8 meter no this cable is not has not this length maybe the cable itself has a problem for for, uh, for next test i will add some coax cable with, with an appropriate length to, to this point here sorry to, to this point here and measure at the, at the open end of the coax cable same as we have here to see whether we have a problem with this cable I've connected a new coax cable and it's an RG, RG174 connected it to the output of the sweeper same construction as here but now we have a new cable and the situation looks a little bit better when we can focus now on the screen on 21 megahertz we are here the uh, drop is a little bit shifted upwards but still there is something at other frequencies that's 28 megahertz okay we are at as before 21 this is 14 this is 7 megahertz and so on on 21 we are still not perfect i will resolder it now with this cable and see uh, what happens the pa brick is in place I replaced the original wire with a new one, also added just for test purposes a ferret core. It didn't improve the situation. Maybe somewhat output more or less, I cannot measure it very precisely. But the problem still is not solved, so I assume now that we have a problem, maybe a feedback in the, into the driver stage or anything else. I have to think about it. For now I will stop this topic recreate myself think about it and maybe i will open a bottle of wisdom this is the end of part eight about the series of the great tr7 you see something is still to be done we solved the problem with the self oscillation that's positive that's a progress but the low output on 21 megahertz which is lower than uh, on 28 megahertz is still not solved I'm not sure what it is, maybe it is a part of the contact concept. Uh, I've I also thought about bad ground connections, but the uh, low pass filter is grounded solidly via uh, several uh, lugs. So this is not a problem and the uh, ground plane is the same for all bands. So I don't think that there is a problem. Maybe it's a simple uh, feedback problem, which goes into the driver stage or pre-driver or maybe a problem is in the pre-driver the pot in the pre-driver there's a pot to set the 
amplitude is not the best one as I've seen some contact problems. Anyhow, stay healthy, stay tuned, see you on this channel.